Hello and welcome to the second session with South Knotts Men's Chorus. We're going to be looking at um, key signatures. So let's get started. Uh, I do have a little sheet. Now this is, I think, the first thing that pops up on the internet when you um, type in key signatures. Clearly, if we're going to be looking at um, chords and uh, harmony and Indeed, when every time we sing a piece, it's really useful to be able to tell what key we're in. So this is uh, a beautiful coloured grid to show you that. Just before um, we get started, does anybody want to tell me your understanding of how we define what the key signature is like we're only going with major scales at the minute uh, it, it's the starting uh, notes of a sequence of notes that goes uh tone semitone tone 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 semitone tone almost tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone yeah so that's the ordering of uh, notes that give us a major scale good so in terms of key signature then um when we see a set of sharps or flats at the very beginning of the piece of music what is going through your mind to work out what key we're in where, where the right, sharps right. and flats are in the, uh, in the signature Okay, so we've looked and we found out that we've got some sharps. What do we do next? Well, I, I look at the number of sharps. Um, I look at the, the last sharp and see what note that is. And then I believe the key signature is the, uh, the next note up. Excellent. That that is, that's very good, <coughs> Howard. Excellent. Let's look at the ordering of sharps then, because if you can't read music, you can't work out what the pitches are, you can still work out what key you are by using this little line. So the order of sharps goes, Father Charles goes down and eats breakfast. Not the only uh, mnemonic, but uh, one that I remember. Father Charles goes down and eats breakfast. And the order of flats is the reverse. Breakfast eats and down goes Charles's father. <laughs> so let's look at that now. So once you've remembered that, you're there. I never knew one was the reverse of the other. Oh, didn't you? Oh, there you go. So they do follow a pattern, um, but we don't have ledger lines, you know, like a little note that has a little line on its own. Um, so you'll see that the pattern does change. So. There's an F, F, C, Father Charles, F, C, back up for the G, Father Charles goes down. Now, the next one would be an A, which would be with a little line just there, A. So we don't use that one. We whip down the octave to face F, A. Father Charles goes down and, Father Charles goes down and eats. Father Charles goes down and eats breakfast. That's the ordering of the sharps. And as Howard said, find the last one, father. It's an F. What's the note above F in the alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F. We're in G major. Father Charles. The last one is a C for Charles. C in the alphabet. What's next? D major. It's nothing particularly <laughs> stressful. The only time we have to be a bit more careful is when we've got lots which happens very infrequently. But we've got an E sharp as the last one. Now the letter above E is F, but father is our first. So it's not F major, it's F sharp major. Same here, the last sharp is a B. The letter above B is C, but it's not C major, it's C sharp. Flat wise, anybody want to tell us what we do there? It's the penultimate flat. Well done, Tony. It's the penultimate I don't know what flat. you do with a penultimate flat, but I know it's something about the penultimate flat. The only one we can't use this trick for is the first one. We have to just remember that F major has one flat. We can work it out from our tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Uh, but um, just if you remember that, that's F major. 
then every single time it's the penultimate flat that is the key you're in. So breakfast eats we've got here. What's the penultimate? B, so we're in B flat major. Breakfast eats and. So what's the penultimate flat? E flat, so we're in E flat major. Breakfast eats and down, the key we're in is? A flat major. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is inversions. Now, just as a recap, last week we looked at the primary triads. What are the primary triads, please? Yeah, one, eight, five, and fifth. Quad one, four, and five. Can anybody give me the um, the property name? So, for example, quad one is the tonic. Can you tell me what the fourth and fifth are if we're using the degree of the scale name? Subdominant. Dominant. Brilliant. Subdominant is four, dominant is five. So we're just going to stick with those chords today, the primary triads, but we're going to look at an inversion. Does anybody know a definition of an inversion? Well, a chord where the root um, note isn't at the bottom. Oh, very well done, John. Brilliant. Yes. So the root is the name of the chord you're in. So, for example, chord one. Oh, what key are we in, by the way? D major. D major, well done. So my chord one is what, miss one, what, miss one, what? D, F sharp, F sharp. A. a. Chord four? G, B, D. Well, and chord five? A, C, E. A. C sharp. C sharp, C -sharp. yeah, E. Excellent, okay. So chord one is the chord of D. So D is the root, it's the note that the rest of the chord blossoms, grows out of. So it's always play one, miss one, play one, miss one, play one. D, F, A. Now normally the D, if you're writing for a male voice choir, the D would be in the bass line. And here it is, D. The F sharp and the A, you can divvy them between the other, but you've got three parts to write for. You've got tenor one, tenor two and baritone, but you've only got two more notes. So one of them is going to have to be repeated. So in this instance, it's not exactly the same note because it's not too higher, but basses have a D and tenor ones also have a D. Tenor twos are on the F sharp and baritones are on the A. And there's the notes that make up chord one. Now what we can do, there's your DFA in root position, chord one. We can move it so that the middle note becomes the bass note. So we invert it. Rather than having the D at the bottom, we stick the D above it and we put in the bass that F sharp. So we've got an F sharp and we've got baritones and tenor ones both on Ds and we've got your tenor twos on an A and an F sharp in the bass. And then the final one, one C. So now the fifth, the top note, is going to be at the bottom. And I've popped the D and the F above at the top. So the bass now is going to have that note just there. And then I've got D and D and an F sharp. I just want you to listen to them. I'm going to play one, followed by one B, followed by one C. And if you can tell me what the difference is or if you can tell me why you might use them this is chord one in root position here it is again firmly in the bass now i'm going to put the f sharp in the bass i'm going to put the a in the bass Okay, what does, what does changing the bass note do to the sound of the chord? The first one sounds stronger. Strong, the, the first one sounds stronger than the other two. Good, yeah. yeah, I agree, it definitely does. Which is the weakest? The last one. 1B. One so you think 1B, you think 1C. Let's listen, listen again. Here they are, 1. One B, one C. 
It's Ooh. a toss-up between Tina mm. B and a C. Yeah. It, 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 it's supposed to be the, the one C, uh, and there are only actually two places initially that you can use a second inversion chord, and that's just before a cadence or as part of a special progression of three chords that supports that weakest note, and you'll see why um, maybe if we get onto that today. I don't know whether we will. So uh, there you go. Chord one, chord one B, and chord one C. Does anybody know why we might use those different inversions when we're writing harmony? For variety. For variety. Anything else? It feels very nice nice. leading up to something. Good, leading up to something. So it can it can be that. Um, you're thinking about the line that the individual singer, the bass singer would sing, that mm. gives it more shape rather than just one, uh, mm. one, one, five, one, four, one, five, five, four, five, one. It would be really tedious if they only had three notes. Obviously they, they don't only ever sing primary tries, but it, let's pretend they do for now. So it would give the bass basses a much more fluid, melodic line by giving them a different note rather than giving them the root every time. So let's have a look at this next section here then. Let's just write in now what the bass notes would be. You can see your primary tries at the top. So what is the bass note going to be here? In the first bar, what's the bass going to have? D. 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 Next. F sharp. Good. Next. B. B. Good. Next. E. E. Let's do that one. It's a bit high. Otherwise, next. A. A. Next. C sharp. And. F sharp. Good. So, that's not a really very good line, to be honest, is it? Let's go I've, seen, and, I've seen worse. <laughs> let's go back and see if we can just smooth it out. So sometimes you won't want to use a, an inversion. And what I want is to get this melody, this, this line to be as less leapy as I can um, in order to make it really eminently singable um, and fluid. I don't want the leaps it's currently got. So sometimes it will be a good idea to keep the inversion and sometimes it will be a good idea to abandon the inversion. Let's keep this one as it is and this one as it is. Is this a good choice for chord four when the last note was an F sharp to do that? Just go down to the lower B. Could do. What else could you do? The G is closest. Absolutely. I'd get rid of that 4B and make it just a normal 4, because then you've got that nice, easy incline. 5C is next, which is an E. Okay, the other alternative would be an A or a C sharp. What do you think? Keep it as it is. Keep it as it is. Personally, I think I'd probably go to a normal 5. Put that in there. Now, 1C. 5B, 1B. What do we think about this? Is this a good idea for the final cadence? We've got to have two chords. Uh, the final cadence would sound like this. As opposed to in root position. Which one sounds better? The second one. Second. Second. So you've yep. got to, you've got to stick with root positions, haven't you, for your last two? Okay, so that I mean and it's not very exciting, but that is definitely a nice, easy line. It's lost all its leaps, um, and you've still got your firm root position chords to give you a good old uh, final cadence. So let me play. B it Victoria, to you. Yeah. if if you end up at root position because you want to end up back where you started, yeah, is it natural that the penultimate one would be the the root of that? No inversions. Yeah, that would happen you, if you yeah, had an five inversion one, back to root. Five one perfect case, unless it's in the middle. 
if it's in the middle of a phrase, if it, this has got a double bar line at the end, so I know this yeah. is the final thing I'm going to sing. It's got to be 5 1 in root position. If that okay. was in the middle, for example, you've got two, uh, Morty Christie, we're going to look at in a minute, you've got four four bar phrases. At the end of the first four bars, I might very well have an inversion because I haven't got there yet. Right. See what I mean? Yeah. Um, the end of the second, I might end with an imperfect and unfinished cadence. End of the third, maybe an inversion again, but the end of the fourth would definitely be 5 1 in root position or 4 1 in root position. Okay. So here is that. <laughs> So nice, simple, easy, fluid bass line. And once you've got the harmony right and uh, you've looked at the part right and it just sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Brilliant. So let's now look at Morty Christie, which we talked about last week. First thing we need to do is establish the key and then work out our primary triads. So we have three sharps. A major. A major. A major. A major. Father Charles goes. The last one is G. We go up one to A. Brilliant. So can you please give me um, chords one, four, and five in A major? A. Yep. E and F. No. Good. Uh, A, A. So C chord sharp. one is A, miss one C sharp, miss one E. E. And F, F sharp. Chord four is A, B, C. D. D, miss one. F sharp. F sharp, miss one. A. A. And chord five is? E. Miss one. G sharp. Miss one. B. E. Brilliant. Well done. Okay. So, <clears throat> nine times out of ten, we will start in the key with the chord one because we need to establish with our listener what our sound world is. First bar. This one's an interesting one. But what chord are we mainly using in this first bar? A major. Which is chord? One. Excellent. So there we go. We've got chord one in this bar now. That's A, then we've got C sharp in A. So what's this? Now I'll give you a clue. It's a melodic device. It's not a change of harmony. What have we done? Think about that back to last week. Put a passing chord in. It's not a passing note. It's auxiliary. a auxiliary. good, it's a lower auxiliary. Now the, there are three notes in this lower auxiliary, but it's still note note below and back up to note again. You could argue that it does give you a suspended chord one at the bottom uh, and that, that is a chord seven over the top of it. I, I, I personally think it's more of a melodic device and you can hear that, listen. That's the, yeah, that's the chord, isn't it? So it's like a little melodic device. So hold chord one in this first bar. Now, this next one, what chord is this then? F sharp, yeah. A, yeah. the two Ds. Good, okay, so what's that then? F sharp at the bottom, F. and the chord of D. The four. Four. It's Minor. Inverted. It's inverted, so it's four. Um, that's C. A. No. It's D, F sharp, A. We've got F sharp in the bass. D, F sharp, A. We've got F sharp in the bass. So it's 4B. 4B. Well, it's first inversion. Well done. 4B. So we've got chord one, 4B. What's this one? Which one? The second beat, second bar. That's a one again. <clears throat> ah, but is it? Inversion. It's, it's an inversion. inversion. What note have you got in the bass? Got the e. 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 So it's called one. C. Yes, e. well done. So we've got chord one, 
4B, 1C, what's this one? It's not a primary triad. D, B. It's not a primary triad? No. Trick question. D, B. <laughs> so you can work it out. D, B, C, C, D. Is that B minor? It is a B minor chord. Good. B, D and F sharp. So you always do play one, miss one, play one, miss one, play one, put them into thirds. B, D, F. Now what's B? B is, B is two. 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 But it's not two because it's inverted. We've got the D in the bass. So it's chord two. B. B. Well done. Chord two B. And then the next one is also not a primary triad. Sharp, C sharp. A. So she's... A, F sharp. Good, yeah. To E major. So, so is this it, one? Is it six? Six, good. F sharp, A, C sharp. It's chord six. It's in root position because the F sharp's in the bass, the root's in the bass. And then next bar, nearly there. <laughs> so we've got chord one with a lower auxiliary, four B. 1C, 2B, 6, then what? Is it 1C? Yes, well done, 1C. Guess, guess what you're going to have for the last two. One. <laughs> well, that's the last one. Five and one. Five, Five and one. one, good. Now, the, this is what we call a cadential 6-4. So it's 1C51. I'll, I'll tell you next week about the numbers. I'm not going to explain those now. But the reason that it's 1C51, we talk about 1C and the C and the second inversion being really weak. The great thing about the 1C51 is that the bass note is the same and it gives you that lovely bass note. Now these two, chord two and chord six, whereas we wrote capitals for one, four and five, the primary triads, because they're major chords. But two and six are minor. So when we write them, we write two as II, lowercase, and we write six as VI, lowercase. We write them small because they are minor chords. So one, four, and five are capital Roman numerals, and um, two and six, in fact, all others are minors and some are diminished. So uh, chord two, chord three, chord six and chord seven are either minor or diminished, they're all lowercase. That's why the primary tries are so important because they're major and we're in a major key. So you use those because if you start chucking all minors in, what key are we in? Is it major or is it minor? <laughs> so that's why they're another reason why primary triads are so important because they are major triads. Um, if they were minors, they'd be underground. Hey, spoken by a true Welshman. <laughs> so let's go play from the beginning. <clears throat> and I just want you to two things. List well, three things. Listen to the fact that that's not that's not a chord note, that's a melodic device. Doesn't really do much. Gives you a bit of a scrunch, and then we move on. Um, then we've got uh, some major major chords second inversion so what's slightly weaker but see if you can hear the properties of those minors when we get there i'll play it slowly so you've got time to think listen to the bass note of this one c five one because that's really you'll recognize it as soon as you hear it you've heard it millions of times before and then there's a bonus point at the end if anybody can tell me what that is okay here we go <laughs> Could you hear all those things very subtly? Say so, yes, oh yeah, I got all yeah, that. Yeah. Oh god, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what about that? Anybody know what that D is? Anticipation. Uh, no, but it's a lovely idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know where it's going, they're just making you wait for it. Yeah, you do. You've heard this millions of times before. 
to the second tennis it leads you to the end somehow doesn't it it does yeah you, you can hear it just wants to fall doesn't it la, la. and it's called a falling seventh e miss one e miss one g miss one b miss one d so this chord it's called a five seven chord and it's got the seventh on the top, that D. So it's got another miss one, play one. Play one, miss one, play one, miss one, play one, miss one, play one, and it gives you a seven. Now these sevenths are used all the time. You'll have heard them in barbershop loads to do this sort of thing. <laughs> You've heard that chord millions of times before, haven't you? Yeah. So that is what we call a dominant seventh chord. You can feel that it wants to fall to the. So it's just it's it's making that perfect cadence even more watertight. We are definitely going to a major. The reason that it does is because the seventh has to fall. You can hear that, can't you? And the leading note, the G sharp, A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, the leading note that takes you to the tonic has to rise. Here it is. La, la, la. So it's got two notes in it, that dominant seven, that have properties that must be obeyed. Why? Because our ear tells us to. It's a musical thing to do. And they both exist in a dominant seventh chord. It's as, it's as final as you can get it. Now that one is placed after the chord, so we call it a falling seventh, because it doesn't come with the chord. You don't get this. We get it after. So that's the difference. It's still a dominant seventh, but it comes after the occasion, therefore it's called a falling seventh. Bravo! Brilliant. Any questions? Just trying to take it all in. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I think you've done a sterling job. Um, so next week we'll look at dominant sevenths because uh, we looked, we touched on that today, and we'll we'll perhaps recap. But thank you ever so much. I think you're doing a cool. sterling cool. job. Cool. Okay. Really, really yeah. good. It's really, really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you think it's, I love it. But I hope <laughs> it is. Oh God, it's at that ruddy Monday night. Alarm, <laughs> <laughs> but it will, so. it will pay dividends. I promise you. Good. Yeah, we've been hey, thanks, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B